Okay, to do some sketching, all we're going to really use in way of panels is the swatches and the layers. So any others that are on there, I'm going to basically get rid of them by dragging them and clicking on little X's. Um, if your swatches or your layers weren't showing, you simply go up to the window and you switch them on by ticking them up here and they will then be loaded. And I'm going to actually drag these two apart so I can actually see the two of them separately and that will allow me to see what's going on a bit better. Next thing I need to do is to actually open up a page. I need to open up an A4 one, but I can decide basically whether I want it to be um, portrait or landscape. I'm going to go for a, a landscape one at the moment. Click OK. There's my canvas area, and I want to now place my picture in it. So I'm going to go to File and choose Place, but I'm going to actually do something a bit smart. I'm going to choose Beyonce. Down here, I'm going to tick where it says Template, and you'll see what happens now. I'm going to hit Place. It's actually created a second layer for me, this template layer, and it's changed the opacity, so it's kind of dimmed the picture. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to we're going to write on this layer one, which is the layer above the template layer. So you'll notice a few things at the moment. Um, first of all, the picture is bigger than my canvas, which is not much good, and on my template layer, I've got a little lock symbol. Now I'm going to do is I'm going to unlock my layer. Once I unlock my layer, you can see these red lines that are on there, they're basically part of the um, actual size of the picture, so if I'm not using my move and select tool, which I am, I can move up and I can find the edge of this little red box and I can grab it. Now if I hold down my shift button as I do that I can bring this picture in and I can resize it on my canvas. Holding down spacebar allows me to actually move my canvas around, so what I need to do is to actually resize this so it fits within my canvas area. So that's not too bad, it's a little bit off size, there we go, and I'm going to move it down ever so slightly, and that's good. So now I'm going to do, I'm just going to lock it again. Locking it basically keeps it safe, it means I can't do anything to it. Before we actually start doing any sketching, we're going to set up our colors palette. So what we can do is we can create our own customized set of colors based upon the actual photograph. Now you'll notice that the photograph here we still know is dimmed out so I'm going to have to open it up as, the, as it should look first of all to get the, the rich colors but I'm going to create in my color swatch a new folder first of all so if I see at the bottom here of my color swatches I've got one which says new color group. I'm going to choose new color group and I'm going to give her a name so I'm going to call this one Beyonce and I'm going to click OK it's now giving me a little folder over here on the left ready for me to put some colors in. In order to get the right colors, I want to go back into my um, template. I'm going to take the lock off it and I'm going to double click it. Now if you notice at the top here it says template JPEG and it says linked file. What I've done now is I've gone into what's called isolation mode, which basically I've gone like inside the picture. I've gone through the template folder to see the real colors. And what I can do now is I can use my color picker, click on a color, so say the red of this dress, there's my color, and all I've got to do is drag that color over and pop it into that folder here. And that's adding it. And I'm going to do this at various points. I'm going to get some of the different hair tones that she's got. So depending on which part of the hair I click on, I get lighter and darker shades. That's a very dark one there. Grab a little bit of that one. I might want to get some skin color. Put that in there. And depending upon the drawing that you're using, you might have more or less of these colors and it's up to you how many you use. Obviously the more you use the greater range of color differences you can get. Now some of these are, are almost identical, some of them are very light so I won't hear that's a much lighter color of a skin tone. But there, that's my color set that I'm going to use. Once I've finished with isolation mode all I've got to do is press the escape button to come out of it again. And I'm just going to put the lock back on just to keep it nice and safe again. Okay, I'm going to use two tools to sketch. I'm going to use my zoom tool to help me zoom in and zoom out. So here's my zoom tool. Now if I click once, it'll zoom me in a little bit. Each time I click it zooms in. Or I can highlight around something, say like this eye, and I zoomed in tight. If I want to zoom out again, I can hold the Alt key down until this turns into a minus. And every time I click, it zooms out. Or I can double click the zoom and go back to normal size. Okay, so that's the zoom tool is going to help us. The other thing we're going to use is the pencil tool. So the pencil tool is here. Now I'm going to double click it and get the options open for it. And there's something that you need to be aware of. This one called Keep Selected. 
I'm going to show you how this works with it ticked and with it not ticked. So we'll start with it ticked and I'm just going to choose, just so you can see it, I'm going to choose a red colour as the stroke colour and I'm going to increase the size of it so it's much bigger. Okay, if I draw a line now, you can see it's drawn the line, it's put the anchor points in it. If I now come back to that line and I start sketching over the top of it, it continues with the same line. Now this is with the, the keep part of it ticked. So what that's saying is basically while I'm still in contact with that line I can carry on sketching with it. So it's a bit like an ordinary pencil. I can just keep, to keep adding to it and, and changing it around. Okay, if I go back into that tool and this time I choose to take the keep selected off. Every time I draw a line it's not selected. Okay, so it produces a new line each time. It's up to you which you prefer to do. I'm just going to clear all these out of the way for now by selecting them and hitting delete. Um, you can still go into a line later if I draw one, one line again with my pencil tool. Even if I can't see that as selected now, if I go for my selection tool, I can now see those anchor points. I can always go into them, have a look at them in detail. And if I use this tool, I can actually grab the handles and I can still edit my line by moving the anchor points around and so on even after I've drawn it. Now your lines are not going to be as thick as this but the principle is exactly the same. Okay I'm going to get rid of that line and I'm going to zoom myself back out again. Get rid of that one as well. Come back to the beginning. So if I was going to be sketching what I need to do is I need to use my pencil tool. I need to decide on the thickness of my lines by changing the point on the stroke. And I also need to decide on the colours that I'm going to use. I've already created some colours. So if I take, for example, the eye, I'm going to zoom in on the eye area, and I'm going to choose my pencil tool, and I'm going to go for quite a thin, maybe a one point. And I'm just going to make sure that I've got my keep selected on, because I prefer to use the keep selected. And I'm going to kind of make my sketch here of the eye shape. And you'll see it's st it stopped because I hadn't clicked off it to start a new line. I need to actually click off it to start a new line. So that's m kind of my outline. I'm going to zoom out again now. So if I want to check at any point to see what it actually looks like, all I've got to do is to turn off the view of my template underneath and I can see the outline. So I can still see that that's partly selected on here because um, I haven't clicked off it with an another tool now. So I click off out of the way, it's deselected come back and zoom back out again and obviously there's nothing much there but an eye at the moment but the idea is to trace off that your shape and then to start adding in the color and so on using different thicknesses of pencil so I'm gonna put my switch my view back on again so I can see my, my shape again and maybe hair hairs a really interesting one Beyonce's got plenty of hair in this photograph um, this is where using different um, colors will come in really useful so again I would probably zoom in to a certain extent not not maybe not completely but if I maybe look at the top section here I can see where it's lighter and where it's darker and I would try and use my pencil and I would now try and take some of the colors from my own color set so there's the lighter colors and if I wanted to draw my lighter shades in now possibly this is the time where you want to turn your keep selected off so you definitely know every time you click you create a new strand. Now it may be that you don't need to do as much hair as she's actually got. You can get quite a nice effect by mixing these up. I'm going to change the colour now go for a slightly darker shade. Start mixing these lines in. Try and get the shapes going to sort of surround suggest her head shape and so on within there and after a while you'll get it to start to take a bit of shape change color again go for a slightly darker one and show it where it changes direction and so on so you get the idea I'll turn off the um, zoom back out a little bit and we'll turn off the view again so we can see what it looks like and you can see this is how you'll start to build up your sketch